That's right. All right. We are back. Hot in tech. Tat Wizard Jesse K is here. And today, I got something for you, fam. I got young guru in the building. What's good, brother? What's good, my brother? Everything always we dab. Always, always, always. Always, always. Listen, so I've been following you for a minute. Of course, you're Appreciate legendary. That. You've produced 10 out of the 11 Jay-Z Engineer, album. Engineered. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. engineer. But still, just as important, because if it's not mixed and laid down yeah, right, absolutely. it's coming back fucked up. Absolutely. So, um, legend in the space. But... To me, you're bigger than even that because you're one of the hip hop people that have jumped directly into technology. Yeah, absolutely, man. I first saw you when you were getting heavy into the Google Glass experience. Yeah. I also was in the Google Glass program. That was fun. That was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I definitely way way it. ahead of his time. Yes. Somebody got to be the the leader. You know, it's like way ahead of his time. Yes. You take the lumps and you you figure out the problems and all that. Right. That's what engineers do. You know, like you you, you make things. You beta tested with people, you know. Luckily, it was a company that's big enough that they bottom line wasn't affected by right. that, and they just come back stronger with it. You right. know, you figure out what the mistakes, but somebody got to be the the litmus test. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. of yeah. course, makes hundred uh, percent sense. So we were discussing off camera. Uh, you pointed out to me, and I'm a te- I'm a super techie, but you pointed out to me that Samsung is now patenting the. It's contact scary. lens that's a camera. It's scary. They got a camera and a contact lens. Yeah. And from so many angles, it's dope. It's like, wow, we at that point now where, you know, I mean, technology has got us to the point where our, our dreams, the things we dreamt about watching Star Trek as kids. I'm 42, so, you know, I grew I'm, up on I'm, Star I'm, Trek, I'm, I'm, yeah. right? But then it also brings into question some, like, social questions about where technology takes us to. Like, I kind of know if somebody's doing this with a camera and filming me. If the camera's in the lens, how do I know if they're filming me? Right. You know, we kind of lose some of those um, those moments of privacy. So it's always that privacy question when it comes to technology in public. But in terms of the in terms of what's going to happen, it's really really dope. And I'm I'm surprised that it came even this early. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Plus, with like augmented reality, I'm going to be able to just pull up your information. Yeah. I'm going to be googling you. I'm the the, the great part Facebook. about it, you know, if you look at it from the from the good side, right? As business, I could walk into a cocktail party or a regular party or a Hot 97 party, and everybody that I don't know in the room, I can Google them. I can see exactly what your stats is, where you work, what you've done, your whole history. Maybe strike up a conversation with somebody about something I didn't know about them. All in that part, it's a great thing. It's next level. But, The negative part is people can look up your whole history (laughs) at a drop of a dime, right? So it's like, it's it's positives and negatives and we just just have to, as the foundation people, the people that that understand where we've been with technology, say, okay, if we're pregnant in a new moment of this type of technology coming out, let's have the foresight to see what the dangers could be. You know, and that's that's always my question. Key. Yeah, the technology in and of itself is neither good nor bad. It's how people use it, right? It's sort of like money. It's, it's right. Like, it's, it's those things where we've seen in the past, um, I could split an atom and that could give energy to a whole city or I could create an atom bomb, you know? Right, so it's like, right. how do you use that technology? Right, yeah. it makes total sense. All right, so speaking of new things, I see and uh, you're repping a new device called the Sensor Morph. We were we Incredible. were able to see it at CES. Shout out to Asterix PR, Elliot, Alyssa, uh, Alyssa. Big up to you guys, definitely. This, this device, to me, is going to change the way production is done in music, but Absolutely. not even just music, artistry, like painting yeah. and, and, and things like that. How did you come across it? What are you doing with it? It's, it's, it's a great thing, too, that now I'm in this space, I go to a lot of things that have to deal with tech. So you see a lot of things early. So I was invited to go speak at the AT&T Foundry. Um, which is a real great think tank for AT&T. For all of those that don't know, you know, you should read the Bell Labs book because it kind of operates the way that AT&T did back when they were Bell Labs. Right. Um, but I was invited to speak there, and that's when I saw it, and I, I feel sorry for everybody else that was presenting because I just gravitated straight towards that thing. It's what I do. It's music. It's dope. And it feels, a, as engineers, again, we, we try to solve problems. So it feels a, a, a great hole of like, hey, this controller is great, but it doesn't do this. Or I like this controller for this and this controller for this, but I wish I could combine the two. Right. You know, this is roll your own. This is make your own controller. This is I can work with whatever I want to work with. If it doesn't matter if it's if it's Pro Tools, Ableton, Fruity Loops, whatever. If I need a couple of pads, I'll make one that has pads. If I need one to be faders, it can be faders. Everything is 3D printed. It rolls up. You know, if I want to have the the 25 key keyboard, I can have that. I could add three of them together and make the full keyboard. Mm. So it's so convenient for people. That. Yeah, wow. it, it, you know, it links. All of them link yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when you get into the technology, you can see even for art. Artists, 
it's so sensitive that you can brush a brush over top of it and, and catch it will each stroke. Catch each stroke. So now painting and things like that will become that much better through this technology. You know, it's it's a great thing. That's why you know I, I choose companies that I feel like are doing something that's not out there, and that's the biggest thing with us. We've gotten a computer to a point where it does most of the things that we wanted to do for music, right? But the human interaction with it is the next step. Everybody doesn't like producing using a mouse. People are used to playing their instrument or hitting some pads or we're human right. beings, we, we're tactile creatures, right, right? right? We like to touch a surface. So this solves that problem in, in being able to create your own. It's, it's a real good company. Nice, yeah. What are the differences between being a sound engineer for Jay-Z and Alicia Keys versus being a consultant advisor for music tech companies? I mean, there's some differences, but a lot of it is the same. It's, it's being up on culture, it's being up on what people want, understanding your product, understanding who's presenting that product, and figuring out the best way to market whatever you have. Um, one of the things that I learned early from dealing with tech, there's a lot of guys that will make great ideas, but they're like wise, right? I'm talking about Steve Jobs and wise, right? They, they, wise is good, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's really Waz the guy, yeah. yeah, he's like the guy that created a bunch of stuff, but he wouldn't have been able to sell it. You see what I mean? Yeah. You needed the genius of Steve Jobs to be able to sell it and present it correctly. So it's about how do you present whatever great idea that you come up with, right? 50% of it is, is making the thing. The other 50% is getting it out to the people. Um, beta was better than VHS, but VHS had way better marketing. And it won the and war. And it won the war. You get what I mean? It's, that's just a tech example. So it's it's for me, it's about problem solving and those things that are very direct in solving a problem that we have. And how do you so, pick which companies you're going to work with or which artists? Whoever you're I feel with? as though is 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 something good for the marketplace and something that I feel has the potential of making money. You know, again, I, I live on both sides. I'm like. The artistry of it intrigues me, and as an engineer, designing something, being able to make something very complicated, very simple for the user, right? The, the more simple it is for you to use, the better I did my job. Um, but also, companies can't exist without making money, and again, sometimes creatives get lost in just the creativity. I could make a piece of gear that <clears throat> has gold plates on it, gold connect, but you wouldn't be able to afford it, right? I gotta come in under a price point so that this company can exist to pay their workers and pay health care and pay the light bill. So, so that's how I pick the companies. Guys that are up and, and coming and are new that I think have great ideas that I think just need the publicity of, of me going out and saying, hey, this is a really great thing. All right, so so right now, the whole industry, the tech industry, is on this precipice of the VR explosion. Absolutely. The first things start to drop in October. Oculus has already started shipping. Um, to me, the PlayStation is going to be a big winner in October because they're the yes. cheapest, and they already have half the hardware in the homes, like 40 Absolutely. million PlayStation 4s in the yes. homes. Are you planning on doing anything in the VR space? Yeah, it's, what's special right now is I'm concentrating on sound for the VR. So um, I'm also in this group called 150 with uh, Tom Warner. Okay. We went through a lot of presentations about how do we do storytelling with VR. It's very obvious how you use it in the gaming world, the training world, um, those sort of things. I can train pilots on it. I can train emergency service people so that they don't have to go through that situation. But in storytelling, in movies, it's very hard to direct someone's line of sight in VR because you have the possibility of looking all over the place. I was in this presentation where Godzilla just took over this city and the woman right next to me when we got done, she was like, there was a Godzilla in it? <laughs> and I'm like, wow, she was looking this way. Right. So the whole point is trying to develop 3D sound and which is different from surround sound. Right. Trying to develop 3D sound to go along with the VR so that directionally sound is telling you where to look. If you hear a car crash over here, you're gonna look that way. Right. You as a human being can tell without even thinking about it that the plane is flying over top of you. That's what I mean by directional sound. Right, right. 5.1 still deals with this one same plane of, of hearing. Right. So there's a lot of people out there that are developing things. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best for, everybody since it's new is creating their own format. So figuring out what the best format is obviously the point that you brought up about the PlayStation is great. If you can do it with the two earbuds that we already have instead of using a whole bunch of speakers that people have to install and right. buy all this new stuff, if you can do it with just some earbuds, people already have those. 
So they're gonna be more apt to go into that technology than something where, oh, I gotta buy a bunch of stuff. Right, it's gonna stuff, slow down the, right? the speed so of for, the... Yeah, so for me with the VR world, I'm so concentrating on the sound because that will allow all of our storytellers in Hollywood and, and, and all over just to be able to tell those stories in that format. And it's obviously, obviously gonna be the new format in which we enjoy all forms of education. Then there's gonna be cameras that come out that can do the surround. Yeah, Samsung's you know, already exactly. putting out the 360 camera. So the big thing now that we don't have is is, is the, the sound. sound. Oh, that's key, definitely. Yeah. Guru, are there any brands or tech companies that you're not working with that you think are doing amazing work in the music tech space that you'd like to work with? Um, shameless plug, I, I want my own Waves package. Um, Waves it does a great job of doing packages of signature engineers. Um, and I'm not the biggest person to go ask people to do things. I like when people come and ask me, but I think that's one I want to throw in the universe. I think it's time for me to do my own waves package. Um, I would love to do one. Um, my, my mentor, Tony Maserati has one, you know, like I'm jealous of all the guys when I go to the conferences and I'm standing in a room full of people that have wave packages. I think I want that. Okay. Dope. So one last question, who are you going to look to, to keep an eye out for new technology? I mean, not to show nepotism, but Hot 97, Hot and Tech is cool, man. My right man. Right there. All right. Love, definitely. <laughs>